welcome back to my channel. I'm a Messy Bun teacher. I am a fifth grade teacher in Middle Tennessee. This is actually round two of this video because when I made this, we literally made the worst thing ever. I attempted to make Turkish Delight last Thursday evening. I did not carefully read the directions. So kids, if you're watching this, read the directions because you're gonna end up with dog food flavored jello. in England, corn flour is cornstarch in America. And I was reading a British recipe recipe, and it said corn flour. So I was like, that sounds weird, but you're the professional. Okay. It smelled like a tortilla. And then in the morning it tasted like dog food slash tortilla jello. In our defense, we did look it up and Googled it and it said- I did. And it was like, no, you have to use corn flour. There's a huge difference. But then at the very bottom of the recipe, it had parentheses, use cornstarch if you live in America, because I guess it's the same ingredient. They just have two different names from two different countries. I live in America. So round two, and it's going to be so much better. I have a gut feeling that this is going to go really, really well. Because we, we, what? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have my Turkish Delight and it turned out really well. That was a few years ago because I have been buying it because it's easier. I have 150 kids this year, so we're gonna make it. So your ingredients this time, do not, let me just say that again, do not use corn flour. Use corn starch. Then you'll need sugar in two different ways, granulated and powdered. And you will need two lemons. Well, enough lemons to make a half cup and food coloring, whatever color you want, but normally the traditional color is red or pink. And then I think that's it. You'll need a, a pan. You will need some pots over here and we're just going to jump right in. So it's going to ask me to do four cups of sugar. So I have a four cup uh, bowl here. So I'm literally just going to pull Pour in the four cups of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. If you are a parent, you can make it with your kids, especially if you love Narnia like I do, it's a great conversation starter. All right, so I'm gonna pour it in here. I have not put on the heat yet because we don't wanna burn the sugar. So it asks for four cups of sugar and one and a half cups of water. So I'm going to pour it in there and then turn it on high. So as that is heating up, um, you it asks for a candy thermometer. I don't bake, so I don't have that, but we do have a meat thermometer because I'm the most paranoid eater in the whole entire world, and I need to make sure my meat is cooked all the way through, so I use this all the time. So I figured, if you are a baker, don't come at me. This is literally all I have. Um, so it needs to be at the degree of 240 degrees Fahrenheit, so we will see what it gets to. So I put it on high. I'll keep an eye out on it, but it says in the other pot, you need to do the remaining amounts of water, which is um, two cups. And then you are going to put in the lemon juice, which is three tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm going to get my lemons. Ooh, here's a good tip. I learned this from Rachel Ray. I think it was Rachel Ray. Yo, what up, Rachel? Hi, Rach. Um, you take a lemon or whatever citrus you're using to get the juice out of and you put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. Shut up. Yes. Are you serious? So it w once it gets in the microwave, it warms up and the juices start to flow. Yo, that's crazy. And then you've got to move it around like this. Give it some love. What kind of sorcery is this? You know, right to right. And then let me get my 
All right, so I'm gonna cut my lemon in half. Cutting it in half. Okay, then I'm gonna take my juicer. I'm gonna put it in there. And then squeeze. So that looks... Why are you stirring it? Just so it gets evenly distributed. That's a great idea. So I need two and three fourths cup of water. That's too much. Okay. Now I'm going to put the water in. Two and three fourths cup. Mm -hmm. And then your three tablespoons of lemon juice. So that's one, two, and three. Um, we can have a party with the rest. Party. And then, look, read the directions. RTD. Oh, cornstarch. This is where the cornstarch comes in. I'm going to whisk this. Ooh. Ooh. I think I need to check on my... Um, yeah, because we don't want that to burn. My syrup, my sugar syrup. So let's, this is from Amazon, by the way. We love it. What's it need to be at? 240. It's not quite there yet. Ooh, I think you need to babysit it because that could burn. Let me get a better shot over here. It's so hot. Alright. Are you there? No good. I mean, are you at the 240? No. I'm at 230. Oh my gosh, I have a freedom for your meeting in 30 minutes. Yeah. Is uh, that three or 330? 330. Oh, we're good. Heat to low. So after you hit 240, you turn One the heat down below? Yeah. Now I'm going with the lemon juice and the water. I haven't put it on high yet because I need to whisk it in. Whisk it. I'm going to dump in the corn starch. Did you say corn flour? I said corn starch. Don't be mistaken. Oh. <laughs> I need one and one fourth cup of corn starch in my water and lemon mixture. Oh gosh. I'm making a mess up here. Uh, okay. Sweetheart. That's not very um, exact. Are you sure Food Network's going to call me? They're going to see this video and they're going to be like, yes, we want her. She is the next Food Network star. I have powder all over me. It's a little thick. So now we're going to whisk it. Whisk it real good. <laughs> you must whisk it. Okay, so as the uh, syrup is cooling, um, you want to turn this on high. You are going to whisk it so there's no clumps or anything. So you're going to whisk it and it's going to be formed into like a paste. And once it is formed into a paste, you're going to slowly, um, little by little, pour it into your syrup and you're going to whisk that so it doesn't get clumpy as well. You've got flour all over you. Do you want to clean it before we keep going? It's real life. It's okay. hashtag real life. Cool. Yeah, you can tell that it's definitely um ha it definitely has a paste texture to it now, consistency. And so now it's ready to be poured into the syrup mixture, the water and the sugar mixture that has been boiling, but I turned it down because you're gonna be adding this. Now it says to add little by little, so I'm gonna look at that. Strange. It's like a science experiment. And we thought it needed gelatin, but it actually does not. Yeah, that was from my old recipe. Apparently, that old recipe. It failed us. It failed us. Well, I actually failed because I didn't read the directions carefully. I forgive you, baby. You know, that's why. So now we're going to pour this in. <laughs> so I just put five to six drops of food coloring in. 
and it's said to make sure it's at the consistency of jelly, which it definitely is. Um, and it was an orange brown color before, and that said um, that was the right coloring. So uh, you take it off the high heat or medium heat, excuse me, and then you put drops of food coloring in there, about five or six drops. Um, and it looks like the correct color. So now um, I'm going to transfer it to the pan. So now we have it in the pan and make sure it is a greased pan. And you're going to put greased? it... Greased? Greased? Buttered. Well, buttered or it actually it asks for like baking spray. And then you're going to put it in the microwave. No, nope, not the microwave. You're going to put mm. it in the fridge for an hour to chill. And then hopefully we'll be able to cut it and pour powdered sugar over it. So far, it actually tastes really good. Compared to what? Much better than last time. But let's see if it forms. Okay. <laughs> Day, you obviously don't have to wait 24 hours, but I did because I had a lot of work to do last night. I'm gonna go grab it from the fridge, bring it over here, and put powdered sugar on it. Mm. It's definitely looking a lot better than the time before. So all you need now is powdered sugar and a sifter. Um, the sifter isn't really necessary, it just helps um, get rid of the clumps. Looks like it came out pre-cut. Oh yes it did and that yellow stuff is butter um, because actually the wet knife actually helped cut it better than the butter so use a wet knife to cut wet it up. Wet knife, butter. Joey did that while I was getting ready this morning so thank you. You're welcome. Um, but I have 150 students so we made 165 um, so my teacher friends can try it too which they probably won't want to try it based on <laughs> last time so now I'm going to shake it like a Polaroid picture shake it like a Polaroid picture like it's oh the weather outside mm -hmm. is frightful sing it girl and the fire is so delightful all right make sure to get some of that in the can corner can you make a snowman on top of it that's a great idea. Yeah, so we're gonna figure out how to separate these pieces. And you need to put powdered sugar on the bottom of your containers if you are transporting them. That's a great idea. Way to think ahead. Right? Yeah, because they are super sticky. Yeah, they're definitely a gummy consistency that is before the coating. Are these clean? Yeah. I'm gonna use the spatula. So it's all coming back to me now. It's all, it's all coming, coming back. back. It's, it's coming back, back to me now. It's so sticky. See, it looks like a jelly gummy consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember doing this last time I made it. You have to dump it into the powdered sugar and roll it around. Roll it around. So you feel like an actual candy maker. And then it's ready to transfer. Don't you feel like it is? So it's I'll be back. BRB. Um, even though it makes a super big mess. We have around 160 pieces in here. It was coated in powdered sugar. You cut it, it's gonna be really sticky, so you have to immediately dump it into a big bowl of powdered sugar and roll it around. Piece by piece. Piece by piece. So now I'm gonna taste test. My hands are clean as they were before. Much better. <laughs> Definitely not dog food. <laughs> it's really good. It tastes like gummy slash like the jelly in a donut, but it does taste really good. I know that this took a while and it made a mess, but for me, it's so worth it to just see the kids' faces as they experience their learning and include more of the senses like taste and so if you can do that in your lessons whether you teach history or whether you teach reading or science or uh, math uh, there's always a place where you can add um, more experiences through the kids senses so 
I'm so excited to have them try this today. I will let you know how it goes. Uh, thank you guys for coming along and watching our crazy food episode. Uh, I guarantee you Food Network will be calling me after they see this. <laughs> Give this a thumbs up so other people can see this. And if you're not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button. Life can be messy, but there's always joy to be found. Love you guys. As an Amazon affiliate and an affiliate of other companies, my videos and content may contain affiliate references and links. If you buy something through one of these links, you don't pay extra, but I will get a small commission. Thank you.